has some good instruction on converting the Wild Hawk sailplane from a brush system to a brushless motor. This Wild Hawk was purchased from Nitro Planes uh, airframe only. Uh, we had to add everything else to the plane to get it to fly. We're using, first of all, build a kit according to the instructions. Uh, one thing that you might want to be aware of that we've done, uh, uh, building the kit is on our connectors on the back that hook to our uh, servo horns, or excuse me, our control service horns, we've put a little bit of uh, rubber fuel tubing over those so that uh, when they clamp on to the control uh, surfaces here, uh, they won't pop back open. We spread the fuel tubing apart with a pair of needle nose pliers, slide it over the end, hook everything up and then slide the fuel tubing forward and that keeps our surfaces, our control, uh, plastic control surfaces together. No uh, worry about those coming apart. Uh, build the plane according to the instructions. You're going to find that there are no no, nothing in the instructions for telling you where the center of gravity is on the plane. I did some calculations according to wing dimensions and things. There, are, there is a formula you, that you can use to calculate center of gravity on a wing, and I came up with two point, uh, basically 2.8 inches, about 2 and 3 quarter inches. I also checked the multiplex site for their um, glider, which is the same. Basically, this is a clone of that glider, I would, I would say. And their center of gravity for their airplane is three inches from the leading edge of the wing, three inches back into the wing, and as close to the fuselage as you can measure. So we've put this on a balancing stand. It balances uh, very nicely with the way it's built. Um, I have had, uh, there's different motors you can put on this in a brushless system. Some of the guys that I fly with are using a, a V3 combo from Grayson Hobbies which works very well, runs a 6 before prop. It's a brushless motor. You can build just a, a, a wooden mount, glue it on your foam here. Uh, with screws you can mount your V3, uh, Grayson V3 motor on that mount. Uh, very simple to do. And uh, you can spin a 6 before prop. However, I had this brushless motor uh, sitting around, not using it. It's a, it's a Viper brushless. The motor weighs 1.6 ounces. The mount here I purchased from Heads Up RC. Heads Up RC. It's made for this airplane and some of the other gliders that are clones. And what this mount uh, enables me to do is uh, fly with a different size prop. It's adjustable so that I can move the mount up and down and I can fly anywhere uh, from a 6 inch prop to an 8 inch prop. Since this motor is 1100 kilovolt motor, and uh, performs better with an 8-inch prop, an 8 to 10-inch prop, I wanted to, uh, to run a bigger prop uh, with this motor. So I bought the mount from Heads Up RC, I epoxied it on, I filled the motor nacelle here with uh, silicone caulk, pushed the motor bracket in, uh, motor mount in with, uh, to the silicone caulk, and then epoxied put epoxy on the front in case I ever have to take it apart it makes it a little easier to get it out of the airplane with the caulk versus epoxying the whole thing in. Like I say the motor weighs 1.6 ounces the motor mount itself weighs about 0.7 uh, ounces so about three quarters of an ounce so we're looking at roughly uh, about two and, two and a third ounces in weight about two and a half ounces with the prop with this system, 2.5 ounces on the back. Now with that weight on there, we you can see that we've mounted our speed control on the side because there really isn't enough area in the cockpit to put everything in the cockpit that you'd like. And it doesn't cool properly when the speed control is in the cockpit without cutting openings in the foam. So I mounted the speed control on the side we brought the wires down here, the receiver wires, there's a hole in here for a switch on the plane, uh, an on and off switch, we didn't use that. We routed the hole, the wires through that hole for the switch. There's another uh, a hole with a plastic insert in it, and we routed, we had to add solder, a battery wire extensions on the speed control. We're using a Dean's connector on the inside. We routed our battery wires through the hole through the plastic, and I had to enlarge the plastic with the drill bit a little bit. We routed our our wires for our uh, battery 
into the cockpit area. I'm using a Dean's connector on it. We're using a Hobby King uh, 2.4 gigahertz spectrum compatible receiver, orange receiver on the inside. And then what I've done is I, before I put the airplane together, I carved an area out, cut it out. I put, I had 1800 milliamp batteries and without carving too much nose, or too much foam out of the nose, I felt comfortable using an 1800 milliamp battery. And the battery slides in and I put a little piece of Velcro on it. Velcro's in very nicely. And without carving too much foam out, an 1800 milliamp pack works very well in the nose. The 1800 milliamp pack is its resell. It's all, I also purchased it from Heads Up RC. Most of your 1800 milliamp packs weigh about the same. So this plane has been built and balanced with an 1800 milliamp pack. Orange receiver, GWS 15 amp speed control, GWS servos, they're 14 gram I believe servos, uh, maybe, I think they're 17 gram servos, they fit perfectly in the slots on this plane. They're a GWS 17 gram servo. I had those two, so I use those, they fit perfectly in the slots. And then what I've done as far as balancing the plane, after looking at Multiplex's center of gravity, suggestion for center of gravity, which is three inches, I mark my wing uh, with marks two and three quarter inch and three inch marks on the wing from the leading edge back. You can see that I've put those marks on the wing and I figured if I was balanced anywhere in between those points I would be fine. This plane is slightly nose heavy. If I use the 1800 milliamp pack the motor that's on the back, about two and a half ounces of motor, motor mount prop, two and a half ounces here, 1800 milliamp pack, about, and I balance it three inches on the, uh, the wing, and I had to add two ounces of weight to the nose to get this plane to balance slightly nose heavy at three inches on the wing. I've added, you can see one ounce of lead is epoxied in the nose, Another ounce of lead was added in, in quarter, uh, quarter ounce lead squares. Four of them are glued inside the fuselage before I put the fuselage halves together. So we have a total of two ounces of lead in the nose. Once again, two ounces of lead in the nose, and that's fairly far up front. It's within uh, about an inch of the very tip of the nose on the inside, an inch to inch and a half, two ounces of lead, 1800 milliamp pack, Hobby King Spectrum compatible orange receiver, GWS speed control back here, 15 amp. I mounted it just in a location that was convenient for the motor leads to reach the speed control with, without adding any, any extensions. That's not going to change things too much, that light speed control. About two and a half ounces of weight, again, in a combination motor mount, motor prop uh, here. Uh, again, uh, 1.6 ounce motor, 0.7 ounce mount, and then the weight of the prop. Eight, we're spinning an 8 by 3 8 slow flyer pusher prop on this combination. And uh, you, of course, use a variety of motors. But this, is, this plane flies very nicely balance the way it is with this combination. If you're going to put a heavier motor on the back, then of course you might have to add more nose weight. A lighter motor, probably not so much weight. This motor develops flying an 8 by 3 8 APC slow flyer pusher prop. The motor is develop, developing about 10.5, uh, pulls about 10.5 amps gives, and gives me 115 watts, 115 watts of power. Uh, which is just running the motor very, very conservatively for what it's rated. 115 watts of power. The plane, I can't remember the all-up weight of the plane. I think it's right around uh, 24 ounces. But regardless, at 115 watts, the plane is flying on about 80 watts per pound. So, uh, which, if you want a, a nice flying airplane, you should figure about 100 watts per pound 
on most electric part planes, and that gives you some pretty good aerobatic capabilities. But on a glider, uh, 80 watts per pound, the plane will climb very briskly, easily climb very fast on a 45 degree angle, balances very nicely, and I had the motor, and so that's the one I used. And here again, um, when we put this on, if you want to ask questions about different combinations, I'll try and do my best to answer your questions and give, give you an idea of what you can, what you can do. Um, we thought we'd add a, uh, a second airplane to the uh, video just to show you what you can do with a second uh, motor system. This is the Grayson uh, Microjet V3 motor. You can buy this in a combo if, you, if you'd like. It just, uh, it runs, it's spinning a 6x4 APC prop, pusher prop, and you can see how the owner here, Terry, has uh, made a wooden mount and epoxied it on the fuselage and then screwed the motor mount to the, uh, to the wood and uh, works very well. This is a less expensive way to go if you want to uh, keep your costs down and, and use this motor and the plane flies very well with this motor combination. We're going to show you how to balance this how to balance this Wild Hawk at three inches back from the uh, leading edge of the wing. We'll set the plane on the stand, center it, center it between the dowels, mark your wing. It's a little nose heavy but uh, you know we found that it flies very well there and here again If you use the balance point between two and three quarter and three inches, at two and three quarter inches it's pretty much level. At three inches it's a little nose heavy. And we figure that's about where the balance point should be on the plane. We'd rather fly a little nose heavy than tail heavy. And we've tried it here. She flies very well.